Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Pisa Makeover. Today I'm Jen Wang. Perseverance, guys. We're going to be checking out a young black African asks Ahmed Didat, why did God create black African to suffer? Wow. That's a harsh word. Yeah. Why did God create black Africans to suffer? Like? God created everyone. So, irrespective of your color. People through pass people pass through hardship, either being mm. white, fair, any color. Mm. Everyone pass through hardship. It just depends on um, idea, your plans about your life and how you set yourself to move forward. It's not basically about color or stuff like that. We know Africans are passing through um, a lot of poverty, the high rate of poverty is really, really high, but that does not mean God created Africa itself to be poor. So I want to make that point clear. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. The second question is there. Your second a little louder, a little louder. The second question is there. Why are we, we, we hear that and the Bible tell us that God created a man? And so all that we have a different, different nation here, population here. So now, why did God allow, allow blacks to, 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 to be suffer? Now I will explain. I will explain. You see, go, it's, the creation is the creation of God. But mankind, he creates his own standards of judging. Like for example, we are told by certain groups of churches that the black people of the earth are the children of Ham. You see, Noah, Noah, you heard the name Noah, after the flood, in the Genesis chapter 9 you read, Noah, after the flood, him and his three sons, Sam, Ham and Japheth, they started growing grapes. And from the fruit of the vine, they fermented the wine. And Noah drank too much. And he was lying naked. I'm reading this from the book of Genesis, chapter 9. And out of his three sons, Sam, Ham, and Japheth, Ham, Ham saw his father's nakedness. He was sprawled out on the ground naked. And it was a big joke for him. So he laughed. Who laughed? Ham. You know how you spell ham? H-A-M, ham. Ham. H-A-M, ham, you also spell for that piece of pig. See? You know the Englishman, he loves ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. How do you spell ham? That's right. So this person's name was Ham, one of the sons of Noah. His name was Ham. And he saw his father's nakedness and he laughed. Big joke. The other two sons, they felt remorse, ashamed of the father's condition. So they took a piece of cloth and they walked backwards and they covered up the father. The father in the meantime, he knew what was going on. But he was too dead drunk to do anything about it. But when he came into to his senses, he began to curse. And you remember the curse? He said, curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. You attend Bible class, don't you? You remember this? Curse be Canaan, for a servant of servant thou shalt be unto thy brother. So they tell us in a system, they say that we black peoples of the earth are the children of Ham. That fellow who behaved like a pig laughed at his father's nakedness. So as such, we are to become the viewers of wood and the drawers of water. So, they want to see to it that you, you keep to your role. Your role is sweep the streets, carry the rubbish bin, work in the factories, whatever. This is your menial labor, that is your destiny. Now, this is the invention of man. See, man's own invention. God didn't make you so. He, as we are told, that he made us in his image. He made everybody upright. He says, He the Lord had made man upright. Upright means straight, going straight. So the invention of man, the devilishness in man, is finding excuses to how I can discriminate against you, create theories, weave stories, fairy tales, and around these fairy tales, I find justification for keeping you down. Now, the Holy Quran, this book of God, the Quran, our religious book, it gives us an explanation of the theory of race. And I would like you to judge 
whether it answers the problems of mankind or not. It says, and I'm quoting in Arabic, the original, and I give you the translation. It says, Ya Yuhannas, say, O mankind, the whole of mankind, whether Africans, Indian, Chinese, Eskimo, everybody. Ya Yuhannas, O mankind, inna khalaknakum min zakarin wa unsa. It is we, God Almighty says, we who have created the male and the female. We have created you all of a single pair, a male and a female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا And it is we who have made you into nations and tribes. What for? To discriminate against one another? No. It's the لِتَعَارَفُ That you may recognize one another. This Mr. John is a Zulu. That Mr. John is a Kaza. That Mr. John is a Swazi. That Mr. John is an Englishman. That Mr. John is a Frenchman. That Mr. John is a German. For the purpose of recognition, he has made you into nations and tribes. But since man has a sickness of wanting to discriminate on false premises, so God Almighty gives us a standard. We all have a tendency to behave like that. All. There is no exception. There is no nation on earth who is an exception to this rule. That everybody wants to create standards of judging other people as inferior to themselves. You said the African just now. And I accept that the African is, in the South African context, he is at the lowest rung of the ladder. Economically, educationally, in the profession, he is at the bottom rung. That we have to agree. But now, among the Africans, we have Zulus. I was questioning the students. I said, are you all Zulus? The majority way. Some said, no, she is a cause. Huh? Somebody says something, Chwana. But now, the majority of the people that are here in this institute are Zulu. Am I right? Yes. Right. Now, ask the Zulu. Ask the Zulu, what is Zulu? Is Zulu. What does it mean? Is Zulu. The heaven. No? Is Zulu. You are the heavenly people. Is Zulu. Hmm? <laughs> yes. That's in your mind. Is Zulu. We are the topmost people. Among the Africans, who is the greatest tribe, the warrior nation, the topmost nation? Your title, the name, your name of your, your race is also Izu, Zulu. Are you in Zulu. And what about the others? What do the Zulu say? Isilwane. Am I right? What does he say about the others? The Khaza, the Swazi, the Chwana, what are they? Isilwane. No, this is the nature of man. Everybody. The Arab said, said I'm the Arab means we are the eloquent people and the rest of the world is ajam, meaning dumb. The Jew said, we are the children of God and the rest of them are Gentiles. You know? Jews and Gentiles. What is Gentile? Means unclean, filthy, dirty people. All the rest of the world, uncircumcised. Filthy, dirty people. This is the nature of man. Every human being on earth whether he's an Indian, whether he's a European, whether he's an Englishman, he feels better than the German. The German feels he's better than the French, and the French feels he's better than the Italian. So this is the nature of man. So God Almighty, God Almighty, he gives us a standard. See, since man has the sickness of creating false standards for himself, this creator, God himself, he gives us a standard of judging between people. And the judgment is, it says, Inna akramakum in Allahi atkakum. So most certainly, the noblest in the sight of God is He who is the best in conduct. Not good or bad, not rich or poor, not black or white, but the best in conduct. If your behavior is better for mankind than mine, you are a better person. If my behavior is better than yours for mankind, then I'm a better person. It has got nothing to do with your race, your language, your color, or your the color. This is the standard as given by God Almighty in the Holy Quran, standard of judging between one and another. Your behavior, your conduct, your good behavior. Any other question? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> a clap for him, Ahmedinat. Ahmedinat did a wonderful explanation right here. Like, I really like this. I like this video. This is the second time I'm agreeing with this one. Yeah. This is totally true. He's just. Open it out. 
he explained it perfectly. Like, I can't always explain like this because he he went in depth and he picked out the truth, not because um, he's clarifying favor for black or white. It's because he spoke the truth. This racism or fitting or this um, discrimination started a long time ago, even in the Bible. Um, according to what you say, the Jews, the feel that is um, children of God, and any other person that Gentiles. You see, it's it's something who something that have been a long time ago. I, I said it here before we started this video. Everything is with the mindset, is your idea, your plans, because um, they qualify um, or classify Africans as the lowest bridge at the highest rate of poverty in the world and stuff like that. It's that does not mean God made Africans to be poor or God made Africans to be at the lower bottom. You see, we have um, America now, we have Germany, we have different countries. During those times, the long time in the Bible, they have Egypt. Egypt, Egypt were the one who was ruling the world. So in, when it comes to like, um, riches, they were the richest. But right now, in Egypt and the Romans too, but right now, they are not at that level again because um, the world has evolved. Things have changed. You see, that's how the, the pattern is. Everything is just about um, basically nation conquering nations and also mindsets. Now we're in the race of um, how you work, how best you work, how educated you are, um, how you are willing to work, how hard working you are to um, achieve greatness in life. It's not about your color, it's not about your race, it's not about um, your religion itself. It's basically about how hard working you feel you can work and that's basically it your mindset your plans your plans for life what is your idea what do you think how can you solve a problem that is basically it. it's not about okay now you see africa is one of the poorest um continents in the world so how can africans elevate the safe away from such standard so what we have to do now is how to um look for solutions um to create more jobs look for solutions um to make people hard working, to, people, to make people go to school, and stuff like that. It's not about um, you seeing yourself that God made you that way. God never made anyone to be poor. Life itself is a decision. You make your choice. If you choose to remain like that, you stay like that. If you choose to move forward, God will make a way for you that you will move forward. So that is how I see life to be. Life itself, God gave us a choice. You make your own choice. If you make the right one, you are safe. If you make the wrong one, you are where you are. So you have to... Um, be decisive. So um, this video itself, Ahmed did that. He was really amazing right there. He explained it vividly. I really like, like the way he explained it. Like, <sighs> the hand of applause. He was really good at it. He really explained it clearly. He went to the Bible, went to the Quran to bring more knowledge and enlightenment to the black man who asked the question. So this was really amazing. I really do enjoy it his explanation. What do you think? I feel he said everything up. Uh, people should not be intimidated just by the way um, they are being treated. I feel you, we all know our words. So if you feel that what someone is saying does not sit, by, sit right with you, you can let them know, oh, don't talk to me like this. Or if people have a conception, this is how these people are. Prove to them that that is not how you are. Like, be yourself. Do what you want to do. Don't sit by and let their negative ways, let their, um, their superiority bring you down. Work out, do yourself, do you. And you're going to elevate higher than those people that sees you as, like, sees you as inferior. You're going to work harder than they are going to be at a very higher place. Just like he said, everyone wants to be superior. Everyone wants to look at someone they're better than and be like, oh, this person is inferior to me. Mm. But you need to bring out your own self. Like I just feel most times people try to look at someone inferiorly to feel good about yourself. The self, yeah. And I feel that that's not how life is supposed to be. I feel you should feel good about yourself by your own work, not by someone else doing less than you are. So we all need to understand where we're coming from, know our worth, and then work hard on it. Don't let anyone's negative impact bring you down. I really love the way he explained it. I just feel your good conduct. If you do good conduct, yeah, you are both with us. But this was a beautiful video. I really do enjoyed his explanation and he was really detailed in it. So guys, please let us know what you think about our reaction. Please make sure to like, subscribe and share our videos. See you in the next one.